do do you have pencil works um and what's funny is now i'm in networking mode now i'm trying to get you some work so do you have some do you have some pencils i could show to some people to potentially get you some work uh no those are actually shirts that i designed for the bands that's i used to oh, okay. do a lot of album covers and that's what i'm saying like you drew that that like uh that. that design it's all digital photography stuff like that still like that's awesome that's epic. Yeah. that's great yeah i did stuff for uh if you scroll down further i did stuff for fear factory static x Oh wow! Yeah. Um, Dino oh, Cazera is the guitar yeah, player for your factory. That reminds me of the artwork uh, Gears of War. They did these limited yeah. edition um, Rockstar cans, I think, and they yeah. had artists. They like yeah. would list the artist on them, and then they had like this cool. Well, because they had that three slash thing that was going on, right? Like the skulls of their enemies was like that three slash thing. I don't remember what it was. I just remember there was like her, her, gears and skulls and a bunch yeah. of. Cool art. I saved yeah, them yeah. someplace. I have them. Like I. I I don't know where, but I know I have them someplace. It's like they're anyway, really, really cool artwork, and it yeah, kind of reminds no, me of this. We we got a we got a network together, uh, Richard, because I can, I think I can get you some work. Cool. Uh, yeah, and that's the inking. Yeah, that's look thing, at you know, that. that is dope. Wow. For for comic books, I mean, right now I'm mainly doing inking. I can do pencils. Um, I actually okay. just did flats for Adam on a uh, the Ninja High School Indie Wars <sighs> okay, book. Great. For Antarctic Press. Um, and the only reason why I did that is because he was in a crunch. Um, I, do, what, do, um, do you have like a set price for like shirt designs? Because there's people that I know that might want some yeah, stuff. Yeah, like band designs. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, that. yeah. I've, got, yeah. I've got set prices for shirt designs. Uh, I Dude. just did a, a lyric video not too long ago for a band here in town <laughs> called Noise Auction. Nice. Where, um, where can we find you? If we wanted to find you directly, most like the RLJ3. easiest contact, where can I find you? RLJ3.com. RLJ3.com. Uh, on okay. Facebook, it's uh, facebook.com slash RLJ3art. Look at that. You just came to our interview, and it's like a job <laughs> interview. <laughs> That's all right. I'll take it. This is the first job interview I had that I could actually smoke. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna follow you right now, man. This is awesome. I think that you're, um, you know, it's one of those things where you have the art brain, you know what I mean? Like you have the, you have the brain to be in comics. It's just, you need a, a bigger network, you know, to, to maybe help you uh, sustain more economic, you know, investment into the, into this trade, into the skill set. But, um, yeah, I think the body of work that you have is obviously very comic oriented. Yeah, so, and, and one yeah. of the things Greg and I are trying to get together too is like to help artists get get more work. My brother owns a music production company. We work with artists all the time, like you know, oh, nice. sing, singers, rappers. Uh, we 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 do work in uh, hip hop, EDM, pop, all that stuff. We even have country, Americana, that kind of stuff. Um, but like like everyone knows that whatever your main artistry is typically that's not the platform you make money on like musicians don't make money off their music they make it off their merch and their concerts yep, right? yep. and that's what we realized yep. the comic book company we're not really going to make money off of the selling of our comics it's more like maybe the services we can offer based on our proof by the comics right, right. like so i talked to a couple of hip-hop artists who are interested in potentially making comics but I didn't even think about merch design because it just it didn't cross my mind. But some of this stuff is pretty gnarly, and it's uh, I got some okay. I got some particular people in mind that might be interested in stuff like this. Well, actually, if you if you click on the photography tab, I do photography as well. Uh, <laughs> click on that noise auction one. Hey, click on that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That was taken in a warehouse. Oh. Um, so the floor that they're standing on is the actual warehouse floor. Yeah, you can see it. And everything else is what I did digitally. Did you add the cracks or were they there? I added the cracks and everything, the water and all that. Nice. Cool. Let's, uh, let's do a little zoom in. Those trees are in the warehouse too. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pretty open warehouse. I'm like, it, oh, it was a it was a big yeah, it was a big warehouse. What was this on there? Or did you put the stamp there too? No, I put the stamp there. Very, very nice. Wow. That's, like, that, that, uh, so I, I do graphic design as well. I just like it's this is all it's cool because, like, I can do stuff like this. 
it would probably take me eight times longer than you. Like, <laughs> like I'm just super slow, but I've like, I know how to do all this stuff. That's why I'm very fascinated by like the detail. It's like, I'm looking at all the stuff I know I would be looking at as I come across it, like the shading over the coloring. That's why I was asking if it was on there. Well, that's actually what I used to do for the, uh, the uh, shoe company that I worked for was photography design and I did UX design for their website as well. So, wow. Been in the game for 20 years. Yeah. I'll definitely be bothering you for some merch stuff, potentially, potentially album artwork, honestly, because it's all, again, it's all stuff I can do, but if I, if I can hire it out and not do it and just take a <laughs> cut for commission kind of thing, like, or like not commission, uh like referral you know what i mean like I, i'm cool with that <laughs> like there's there's tons of people that um that we work with that would need stuff like this eventually so it's like and some of them are going to be looking forward very soon well i've got a ton more work that i need to put into my portfolio on my website i just haven't been able to do it i'm working on other clients work um actually building a website for a photographer here in town called laura dark what type of genre of comic? I don't know if I missed that. Would you be like really interested in doing? Um, looks like dark. <laughs> yeah, dark. I it doesn't really matter, really. It. Um, I would if I was doing pencils, I would like something dark. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like ink would work. <laughs> what's that? We have our comic ink, and it's like our tattoo artist character, and yeah. uh, Adam does that, but like. Uma. Or that, yeah. Puma. like a plan, that, but um, yeah, we have like this assassin character too. So we have a lot of comics in the works. Um, the other just, one I'm thinking too is Greg, even, even potentially your character, the one who's like, like if if it's mostly like Batman esque vigilante style, like at night. Oh yeah, he, it's 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 uh, like a former MMA fighter gone vigilante. Except I have to figure out a different name besides MMA. It has to be like. Some oh, no, them. MMA is fine. MMA is mixed oh, martial. Okay. Yeah, that's not that's not like a brand. It, it's become a brand in the sense that it's utilized, but it's as much of a brand as karate. You know what I mean? It's just a uh, it's, it's just a word, mixed martial arts. Yeah, I've got a book that I'm working on right now. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that's going to be out by October called Mora, and it's a book that I started when I was in high school. Nice. Um, and quickly dropped it. Let me see if I can find some. Uh, Images to show you. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, the other cool thing too is uh, would you consider something like Star Wars to be sci fi or fantasy in space? Mm, fantasy in space. Yeah, that's probably, <laughs> yeah, because like Star Trek, I would say sci fi, Star Wars, fantasy in space. They've got magic powers. Still got to watch the last two episodes of Mandalorian. Still, I got to watch the one that just launched. My me and my son haven't watched I just, it. Yet. I just it's saw it. Uh, it's good shit. It's good shit. I already saw the spoilers, but I don't care. I'm still gonna watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll like this one. It gets a little more like you, you get some something good. You get something that makes don't you feel say anything. Yeah, I don't say anything. No, I, I, <laughs> no, I, trust me, Greg knows. I fucking hate spoilers because like I. I'm busy all the time, so everyone else sees shit before I do. And I had somebody ruin the end of season one of Game of Thrones, the biggest Ooh. show of the decade, right? Dang. And like you, that's the one that's like the most important too, like the one that starts everything. <laughs> yeah, like but for real. Like, I'll go ahead and share my screen here and show you the stuff. Oh, yeah. um, how do we end this stuff? Wiener, wiener, wiener. The Star Wars or the South Park one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, let him share his screen. I just Jesus. Ooh. Jesus. Pure so this is comics this is more uh, this is uh the Oh the Nether started. stuff. Greg, the Nether stuff. The Not the, the Realm. Not the Realm. That yeah, he could you would definitely do it. It's literally darkness. So. Yeah, it's literally yeah. like our evil universe that's like that's awesome. Yeah. Like this totally matches I that. can literally picture it being in that type of vision where everything is just like dark red and black too like <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool I, I think we'll keep the whole one side of the book black and white like i mentioned earlier that would be cool yeah with this yeah, i would probably do that red, with just red, red uh yeah red accent colors that's that's what greg and i were yeah. talking about at one point potentially having 
yeah, the Noctum Realm be manga style, but red when there was like the power, like the, the, the aura that would be used is red colored. So whenever that scene, like that could be seen in red. Oh, so cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> so cool. But yeah, that's the book that's going to be coming out hopefully October 30th. Nice. And I'm not going to give too much away of it right now. It's all yeah. a secret except for this cover. You got, you got like right. a little less than a year. I can't even think of math right now. So, <laughs> what's math? What's math? Yeah, what's math? X plus Y equals sandwich. <laughs> what's sandwich. math? I'm going to grab another beer. Hold on. Exactly. <laughs> and look, that's how that's how the Greek did it. You know what I mean? So I'm just following in their tradition. <laughs> Is that the third one? Second. Oh, okay. Still on a second. Four. I'm almost done, though. I'm almost I did done, four though. of these Mackenzie's. Yes, they are Mackenzie hard cider, but still. Look, guy. And I did Look, a guy. shot of this. Look, guy. You you before. you want to see what that what what I'm drinking as opposed to what you're drinking? Hey, yeah. listen. I started late and I jumped right to rum. So you guys both literally, literally <laughs> double. Is. You should double that. what you're you showed that, and even my wife was like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm going to go get the Everclear. No, I'm not going to. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Don't do that. That's just hurting your body. Oh, Goldslogger, man. Oh, oh God. Goldslogger is so good. <laughs> Goldslogger in like a decade. Ah, I've never no. had that. No. I've always been a tequila man. Jose I've never had oh, yes, no. that once at my brother's bachelor party, and I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen again. I, I like, only like really, really expensive tequila. And at that point, I actually like really enjoy it. But like anything look, less than that, it, like, I don't know. I had a bad experience, and not because I have a bad time with it. I had bad tequila. Like it had gone bad. And it tequila, was bad. Dude. Tequila is it turns me into the Incredible Hulk. I can't have it. Like if you want if you want walls removed in your house, <laughs> there you go. Tequila. It's it's demo like, I'm gonna demo call day. The RL J3 demo team. Exactly. <laughs> call Rich yeah. for demo day. If, if anyone um, else showing up, it's like no, just give me tequila. This will be done in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, it's so a ten story building. Trust me. I got it. I got <laughs> it. Don't God. worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> me and a bottle of uh, of Jose Cuervo will get this shit done. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that gold stuff. Gold stuff. <laughs> No, like gold is good for you, like in terms of your diet. But when you're ingesting it with alcohol, I wouldn't recommend it. Oh no, that shit, it's it, rough. Yeah, it tears <laughs> holes literally in your stomach, yeah, and that's why it gets you so drunk. Yeah, that it tears it holes it's too. It's, it's yeah, it's micro tears. Yeah, it gets you so drunk. The first time <laughs> so, yeah. I had gold slogger was actually at a young life camp. Believe it or not, I was, I was real young. <laughs> Living the life. <laughs> every time, Josh, every time I just post this, every Josh Bell. Everybody <laughs> has to drink now. Yeah. No, yeah. Every time we say drink, you have to drink. Breakfast talk. Um, what about, yeah, breakfast talk is two shots. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, you should just pour that into a glass with ice, dude. That's so good. Like, yeah, I might do that. I might yeah. put dude, it in a breakfast cup. I can't, I can't believe that you're still on the, you know, um, what's it called, the the cider beers or whatever. I'm done. You don't. What are you drinking right now? You just drink rum chata. You just rum? Chata. no. Let me see. I didn't see that shit. You just took another shot of it. <laughs> it's because like, my screen is so small. I can't see what Greg is doing. Oh, well, you guys were talking about micro brews a little bit ago. Yeah. yeah. Craft if you want some really good ones, come to Ohio. I could throw a stone in any direction and hit about 10 of them. Look, like everybody probably in the probably about half of them. Look, the best <laughs> microbrews are in Minnesota. in Minnesota. What? What? The best microbrews are in Minnesota. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they have, they were in the microbrew industry before everybody else was. They were making microbrews before fucking. Anyone else came out on the scene? Goose Island, anybody that sells numbers. Minnesota, like fucking uh, microbrews are the best. Sorry. Have you been to Richmond? Virginia. I don't need to go to Richmond. I've been to Minnesota. They've got some great stuff. But uh, Richard, <laughs> what, what's your what's your favorite um, local craft brew? Um, uh, yeah, go with Richard. Do it. I don't even think I have one. To tell you, Drew. I'm not really a craft brew type of person. What's your favorite type of beer? Like, uh, you're, you're an IPA guy, a stout guy. 
Dude, I'm, I, I very rarely drink oh, anymore. I invite you. You're here. I'm, I'm old, dude. <laughs> I drink and it screws me up for like 12 days. <laughs> I was about to, I was about to invite Hector, and I was like, oh wait, he's already here. I'm already my, here, bro. My, my dad is uh, like a craft beer aficionado. Like he's, um, do you know what the app Untapped is? Have you ever heard of that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My my dad's had like 10,000 unique beers. Mm. Right. Like I've gone to him to show I've gone to him with or I've gone with him to shows where there's like 87 individual breweries, each with like one to four different beers. And we went to every single one of them. Look, I, I won. I won free tickets to a Chicago like locally like microbrew event. I was sick as fuck. When I went there, I still managed to try like, like four or five different craft companies. Like in Illinois, I would guarantee you that, like Minnesota, the the upper Canadian, like upper, I don't even know what the fuck to call them, but the the close to Canada um, alcohol brewing companies are probably the best brewing companies in the world because even the ones that are close to Chicago, Michigan, Chicago based. Um, brew companies are nothing compared to like Minnesota, Canadian, like like literally like micro brewed companies. So that that that's my that's my standpoint. Greg, put put RJ RLJ three dot com in the little banner. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! R. Hell yeah! Okay. <laughs> I just realized that www.rlj3.com. dot three dot com. Actually, don't put the W's. There's no W's in it. Look, just Rich three dot com. If you can do um, pencils, inks, all that kind of stuff, I could probably get you a little bit more work. Um, we just it just depends on what we're looking for. Cool. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah web I mean, design stuff. Wait, well, I forgot what you said. You're good at the back end stuff. Well, well, uh, front, well end. front end development. Front end is that the stuff that we need? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't stand the back end stuff, man. Just... Uh, well, um, <laughs> the design stuff. I'm, I, I want to, I gotta, I'm going to showcase some of that stuff to some artists and see what they think. But uh, there's definitely some that, uh, that, that are pretty hardcore. You know what Fonk is? P H O N K music. Yeah. It's, it's a type of music that's like industrial rap. It's like the stuff that plays in the back of like a car when you're at an illegal street race, you know, <laughs> like the stuff where it's meant to shake your speakers out of your car so that the neighbors, you know, think there's an earthquake. So, so like that type would of music. Prodigy be that? Would that Prodigy fit um, into that? I'm prodigy they're, they're kind of like, like man. Uh, and Duffy Dude, rap. Prodigy was one of my fucking favorite bands. And like, oh, yeah, they're awesome. God, dude. I mean, the Matrix soundtrack alone, bro. I mean, come on. I grew up on Prodigy, Rammstein, Nine Inch Nails. Yes. Nails. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, picture that. <laughs> yes. Okay, so picture that a little more towards uh, like the hip hop rap side. Like, yes, but yes, that's right around that. They're, they're industrial rap. <laughs> there's like industrial rap, punk rap, and then there's like funk, like like uh, in between, a little off. Interesting. That sounds. That's a hell what of is, it, is it funk and what funk and metal? It's no, no. It's like it's like uh, it's it's called funk, not funk. Is it? Yeah. Funk. O N K. I'm just saying, like funk, and, like is it derived from funk at all, or no? No, it's no pH, okay. it's pH, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got so, you. Yeah, it's uh, it's more a. Um... You okay there, Greg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm good. <laughs> I can't feel my face. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm still like. No, no, no. I'm, I'm literally interested in this music. Funk. Well, Hector has to see this to witness this, but I do. Yeah, I do. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate Again. that. Dude, okay, just so you know, Greg, that's a double shot. Yeah, funk would be like if trap no. industrial rap. There you go. That's a better trap a better, and industrial rap. Uh, okay, that makes sense. But, okay, so it's heavy, it's heavy hip hop. It's heavy hip hop. It's super heavy, super hard. Okay. It does get some like a metal taste in it, like a uh, like a like a so what, like dubstep, like light dubstep with hip stop, hip hop. It's more. It's because. Uh, it, I mean, dubstep was born from industrial music. If you go to, if you go to, um, what's it called? 
Um, if we go to Richard Thern, Jones, Jones the Third on Facebook. Yeah, if, if you go to Spotify and look up Funk playlist, you'll 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 see there's a there's a big one, and like then you'll start going, oh, I've heard some of this before. Like, so this is a new genre of music, or no, is it it's something been around. That's been around. Like, I think the name hasn't really been that known. Mm, gotcha. But, uh, yeah, because yeah, I've never heard of that. Yeah, there's a playlist called like Funk. Uh, I think it's like Funk slash industrial rap slash something else. Like it's it's like a. I'm looking it up now to see if I can find it. What What's your favorite music to work to, Rich? Uh, Nine Inch Nails, metal music. Mm. Slow um, jazz. Actually, to tell you the truth, the other day I was working uh, and listening to Phil Collins. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Phil oh, no, Collins. yo. I can feel it. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. You know what I mean? Like, it was probably, you were probably listening to the uh, Tarzan soundtrack, weren't you? <laughs> yes. Look, 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 look. He went look. so hard on that. There's, 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 there's this like really like folk is going to make a huge calm. Like it's going to make this huge like in row in what music is right now. Like legitimately it's going to come. Like I guarantee you the next two years folk like influences is going to just dominate. The, you want to say something really interesting about the that? The independent and hip hip hop like community right now. I guarantee you. I can bet you right now this is what's going to happen. Well, dude, I, there's a lot of bands that I used to work with. That's the other reason why it seemed like every time I got into an industry, it would it start moved. to crash. Yeah, it moved. <laughs> it, um, no, it didn't crash. It moved, bro. It, it didn't move. It didn't move, but it kind of did crash a little bit because it went from bands were making a crap ton of money from ticket sales and merch yeah any signed band that i worked with yeah yeah. yeah. and then it went from they weren't making money from their cds because the record label was taking it they wasn't making money from their ticket sales because they were taking a cut as well yeah and even their merch they started digging into their merch yeah the 360 deals that's honestly though yeah yeah, that's that's their contract they they fucked up on their contract because basically they should they, they figured out that artists didn't know what they should cover and so basically they were realizing that that once like iTunes came mm-hmm. out, that that music wasn't going to be where the thing was. So they're like, we got to get everything else. So they make these three sixty deals, drop yeah. you twelve million dollars up front, tell yeah. you that you owe that back in order yeah. to acquire your masters. Yeah. Uh, you know, and before that, you know, oh yeah, you don't have to share that there, Greg. But if uh, uh, like, yeah, well, you know, I'm still, well, I'm starting to get out of it. And um, that's the reason why. Do you know those like bleach tablets that you put in like your toilet to make it look blue? Did you eat sure. one? Oh, I didn't eat one. No, I like I went I went to the bathroom so much that it's like already turning color back there clear. <laughs> yeah. He depleted. He depleted yeah, that. I'm like, blue, oh, that blue. T- that's sad. <laughs> no, no, no. But see, no, no, that's no. Why, that's you're exactly like... right, though. No, hey. you're exactly right. Music hey. industry, especially, like what happened was uh, like artists lose con- lost control over their own product because they lost merchandising rights really because like yeah. okay if you're going to give them the, the the okay so if if the if the company helps you with recording and mastering your work okay like it's understandable that they own some of those rights that's understandable but when it comes to merchandise that's something that's like it, like you you manifest that thing like you need to retain those rights because that's the money maker for yeah. you specifically for the mer- for the for the rec- recording company your masters your your um your actual like tracks that's the money making portion for them so you need to retain some of your like money making potential and independency through that like like form you know what i mean through that ma- through that material and that's what i love about Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails. He's yeah. seen that coming a long time ago. And he was like, you know what? You're going to take my money? Screw you. I'll get my music away for free. And it was yeah, still at the there top. There you of the go. Track. There you but go. I think, uh, was it Iron Maiden? Or was it Iron Maiden that did that uh, pay what you want for one of their albums in order think, to like, get yeah, around the uh, record I think, label? Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. yeah There's and, a lot of artists that started doing that because of the, dude, the deals. I mean, it was ridiculous. And so, so many more should have been on that. But it's it's like, it's more or less like so if I'm a rap artist, right, and I'm coming from this low-income community, if 500 grand is the most money I've ever seen in my life, that's something that's going to change my life completely. And that's something that they leverage against artists is yeah. that 
this is the most money you've ever, even if it's 20 grand, this is the most money you've ever seen in your life. Yep. So you're going to sign away so much of your freedoms. And, and it's the same thing in the comic industry. It's, it's the same business. That's the point. It's the same business. And what we have to do is retain rights to our work. And that's what independent markets have been doing. Like independent creators have been doing over the past years. And it's been working in their favor. Because yep. we're not selling out as much as we used to. And now the independent market is becoming more valuable because we're not selling out our rights. Well, here's, here's the important Keep thing about doing that. that. The, 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 this is the biggest issue, though, is most artists think that what they have is valuable when in all reality, the reason why uh, record labels do 360 deals is because an artist only has their artwork. Like my brother has gotten music that they were like, we would like to take this, but you don't have a social media. I agree. Product. I agree. So like, that's, I agree. Why, that's why it's important to do all the other stuff. Like if you I agree. If you come to a record label or you come to a comic book publisher and you're like, hey, I've got 50,000 fans, 300 comic books, and I have an entire line of merch. I don't want you to touch any of it, but I will start making new comics with you and you only get the new stuff. They're going to, they will sign that deal, but they won't do it if you walk up and you're like, I've yeah, got three comic books and one t-shirt design. You know what I mean? What can I own everything that's mine and you just pay for all the marketing, right? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, do that. You gotta so come to what, them with the package, man. That's yeah. The package. And that's the thing. Now that there's seven billion people on this planet with the internet, like you're gonna need to like you're gonna need to do the stuff that a record label would normally have done for you or a comic book publisher normally would have done for you. So it's worth their investment because of the a hundred artists they'll sign this year, one will make their money back. But but, but, but one here's the thing actual profit the rest will lose the money here's the thing here's the thing okay so we have this company that's signing musicians this company has a budget this company is is expanding their budget to basically take on new artists right yeah yeah, yeah exactly i'm puerto rican i speak with my hands that's how we do things uh <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I say Dylan's an asshole. See, you see, you see when he was doing his idioms, I was like, "You're an asshole." You see, you see how that works out. You see, again, it plays out. Like it, it plays out. No, I was laughing the whole time. Um, <laughs> the point is, okay, so this this company starts releasing your music because they produced it, because they recorded it, so they have some form of ownership of it over it. Even though it's your creative property, they have some ownership of it, just like a publishing company. So if I go and I say, this is my idea, I just want you to publish it. Just that one format of the business now lets you own my property because you're the one that's publishing it. So basically what we need – what's happening is artists are settling for that middle ground. They're settling for that, well, if you're going to publish me – since no one else is going to publish me, I'll settle for that if I can retain certain rights. And what has happened is the rights are completely – like we, we can own everything. We can own everything, and we give up rights because we want to be in the mainstream, because we want to have a marketplace, because we want to have an audience. Money. Because – right, because money. there's money. Because – no, no, no. It's not even because there's money in it because the, the money is still there. The money is now because, like, the publishing companies own the audience. Yeah, the pool. The, the exactly. They own the audience that's going to spend the money. Fishing. So, so now we're going, okay, let's give up our rights so that we can actually have the audience. But now what's happening in, in the marketplace is that we can own the audience and the rights. We don't have to give up any rights to own the audience. And that's the, the point of everything that Sierra Nova has been doing over the past two, three years has been making people realize that we have the rights of the audience, not just the money that comes with the audience, but the audience itself. And yeah. I think so that's, that's where I think the comic book, comic book industry is going to go the same way the music industry that went. Hundred um, percent. A lot of these bands and musicians realize that hey, I don't need a record label to do what I need to do. I make more money without them. Chance yeah. Rapper. Dylan, Dylan uses that as a as a. Like, we both use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's and it's a concept proof. It's I almost ran into like... a wall when I went to go get my food. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, yeah. Come on. I, I got a. I Dude, got you were gone now. for so long. You were gone got, for so oh, long. I, I wanted to go get like my food, but I went. <laughs> but I have you know the same mug as Dylan no, does, and that no, has but, that stuff in it. So. But seriously though, like, okay, so when we're talking about retaining the rights to your creative, like your your creative vision, like you could choose to give up some of those rights to say that somebody like Image, right? Like yeah. Image is going to sp- sponsor your distribution. They're not going to sponsor your creative process. They're going to sponsor your distribution. If you have an audience, if you have a product that works, they're going to sponsor the distribution of that product to the various markets all over the place. But what you need to do is establish your audience and also establish your your like niche. Like I I know that this is my audience and I know I can sell this much. And then Image is going to be like, yep, you can sell that much, and we're going to distribute that much, and that's how it works. Yeah. But when when we're talking about like independent companies that are just independent completely, they need to understand that their marketplace is the digital marketplace. It's not the printed market space. Printed market space is going to cost them so much money just to create that they don't even need to be in that marketplace in general. They just need to dominate the digital marketplace. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Dylan, bro. <laughs> He's listening to his microphone because that's where sound comes from. I'm moving back from my microphone, so no, I don't know. No, no, like, no, 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 I thought you were whispering to me, so I went like this. <laughs> Is it that far? Like, Am I that far? Do I happen. need to be closer? I have yeah, a good no. microphone, bro. No, no, no. I was doing this the whole time. I was like, no, but the the power is in the indie, and that's what I'm trying to say. Is that the power is in the independent? Like, if you're if you're signing a deal that signs away your rights, you're giving away your power. You know what I mean? Keep your power. Keep moving forward. The 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 likelihood is that in a year or two, you're gonna get another publisher who's gonna be like, take all the power. All we need to do is distribute it. That's all we need. We need that one percent, two percent that comes from digital publishing. And you can keep all the other rights. Yeah, and that's so, that's what that's what's killing the big companies too. Like, well, that's, yeah. DC, that's what's killing them right there's, now. There's two people that actually want to get published by us. I don't know if you guys mentioned that. I was no, gone. no, um, but, yeah, that's that's what I was gonna get at. Is like w- that's what we're trying to do too. Is we're trying to get it so that we can teach. We we want to pull an audience of so many people that because we have such a wide genre, not just superhero comics, but we have like superhero horror, action, fantasy, historical fiction, like. We want you something. Want to make, you wide. want to make it a co-op, right? Yeah, yeah. We're like yeah. kind of like that's we're like making it so that we have so many people coming in that there's they're going to find their fandom somewhere. Then what we want to be able to do is with the power of that teach um, you know the creators that come with us how to build their audience from that, and then if anything like if we need to get involved in distribution of some sort, then we would take a cut. But before then, like we're doing everything that we're doing and just sharing it. And like yeah. by doing it that way, we're building like this collective of like a ton of people. And if like someone well, wants to run off and do their own thing, it doesn't matter because we still have that core audience that we're building. Well, because because right. the thing is, an independent market. Like so, okay, so we're saying, oh, people that like indie should come to our site. But there's even refined niche markets even in that indie market. So it's indie horror, indie sci-fi, indie fucking superhero. And, and what we're saying is yeah. you can own those marketplaces individually and not just the indie marketplace and not just the independent marketplace. It's more or less like you literally own your fandom and then every other person's fandom who's creating that same kind of thing. Yeah, because there's, so, there's, there's a book that I'm working on right now with Adam. Uh, it's called The Dead Among Us. And it's actually uh, Bradley Goldman is the writer. Oh yeah, I know him. Le- uh, leave the light on or something. Yeah, leave the light on. Yeah, he's nice. he's like getting really big in the horror section right, you know, yeah. right now. I was trying to have him on our podcast, but like the scheduling didn't work. So he's just too big. You know what I mean? He's too boring. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hollywood actor over here. <laughs> no, continue, continue though. But um, and that's it. Seems like, I mean, you got to go with the trends with a lot of this stuff, but. Horror is getting pretty big right now again for some reason. Um, uh, sci-fi is obviously always, always. popular. What, what, what's the name of it? Leave on the light or leave the light on? Leave the light on. Leave on the light. Leave on, leave the, light. on the light. Oh, okay. Don't don't trust what I'm. That's coming out of yep. my mouth right now. 
I yeah, am like gold. six no, drinks and yeah. eight drinks in. I, I honestly, Greg, I can't even tell the difference, bro. Like, what? you need to work harder. You need to work harder at being drunk because I can't tell the difference at all. Yeah. Oh, I can, but like, then I'll right. start screaming like right. a right. dinosaur. I, I scream like a dinosaur when I get to a certain point. <laughs> oh, I can do it right now, but I think my landlord would get scared and have a heart attack. <laughs> I can do it right now, but I don't want to scare no, no, no. people. Don't like do it. Wait, is no, it no, the no. sound? Is it the sound that Colonel San Colonel Sanders makes on Waterboy? Do you remember that movie? <laughs> <laughs> when he gets hit with the baseball. Whoa! <laughs> 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 right. Mama, Mama said that alligators, the crocodile, so angry because they got all the teeth. In the teeth. Exactly. <laughs> and look, that's that's my scientific principle right there. Like that's where I start from. Crocodile have too many teeth, and that's why they're angry. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, what time Mama's is it right wrong now? Again. Oh my it's god! Seven Eleven. Yes. I gotta start uh, go drawing. Get a yes. I gotta start drawing. Holy shit! Um, right. thank you for coming Dude, on. No, uh, Richard, you're definitely you, gonna come on again if you want. If you yeah, didn't, yeah, if you don't hate us. No, 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 this is actually enjoyable, man. <laughs> Amen, dude. Rich, bro, I, I think you were a great guest. And what would you recommend I draw in this next hour? Because literally, I'm an artist alley right now. Oh, man. I don't know. What are you into? Um, don't don't say oh, Mecca, because Josh just did that yesterday. I'm going to pull a Bob Ross. Draw what makes you happy. Oh, <laughs> damn. That's so vague. How can I do that? Just yeah, draw your wife. I obviously, knew, that's dude, the right honestly, answer. I, I knew some vague <laughs> shit was gonna pop up oh, yeah. as I asked that question. Yeah. You know what? Fine. And then if you make a mistake, just put a bush there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy accident. It's a happy accident. It's a happy accident. <laughs> oh, well, dude, Rich, right, Rich, it. hey, it was great to to talk to you, man. Um, I'll definitely go ahead and follow you. If you have anything you want to plug right now, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Uh, check out my website, LLJ, rlj3.com. Man, I think I'm drinking. I can't talk. <laughs> um, what social media account are you trying to get the biggest? Uh, Facebook.com slash rlj3art. Okay. Yeah. That's the one we'll push. I, I, yeah. Hell yeah. Go, and go. Uh, I'll be I'll be in contact, man. We, we need to talk about your inking skills and how they can be applied and how we can move forward with getting you some more work, bro. Will do, man. Hit me up for anything. Like I said, I do websites, graphic design, photography, comic book stuff. God and damn. So. Yeah, 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 no, you got to add in <laughs> hooking. I mean, I was a little attracted to your beard. That's all I'm saying. You yeah, know what hey, I mean? this is yeah. This is the only reason why my wife married me and she. Hey, where do you me. where do you live at again? Uh, uh, maybe I can well, make that commute. Hot. Yeah. Ohio, I can make him, a, him and Adam. Ah, are there you go. They, I could make two stops. That's fine. She That's already, fine. she already, if I shave this, she's dwarfed me. So <laughs> she should be like, Where did this baby come from? <laughs> Actually, like an undercooked chicken is what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you get the drawing. Hey, man. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, bro. Nice meeting y'all. Have fun storming the castle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Dude.